So, hi Wumus! It's a very sunny day and uh, we're here with Michael Knowles from The Filthy Kind and Michael Knowles Music. <laughs> Yo! Hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's alright. Um, Michael, you're playing with the festival again this year. What made you decide to play for free? Well, to be quite honest with you, I've played it so many times now that I just get way sick. I just get too much enjoyment out of it. You know, I don't. I've spent a lot of my time playing music, playing for free anyway. So it's kind of like it's it's never really a big problem of mine to play for free. And plus, I'm not really in it for the cash anymore. It's kind of like I'd rather get my name out there, start like doing loads of gigs. Cash will come later. Yeah. You know, it's not really a big thing. Everyone is so wrapped up around money and stuff. It's just like. What's the point, really? When you, when you do something you love, you know? I never picked up a guitar and thought I should get paid for playing in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. So, play for people, you know? Have, make everyone have a good time. Yeah, plus, definitely. It's always, plus, this is always for a good cause, so I'm kind of like... I'm not really going to get bothered about being paid when I'm helping, hopefully, potentially helping somebody else out anyway. So, it's, like, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's so, pretty simple. Yeah, so you're definitely contributing to charities as well and just... Well, that's the thing. Like, a helping hand. If I can do that, I mean, I'm not exactly good at volunteering because I'm quite lazy and I don't wake up very early. So <laughs> I'm not very good at like yeah. volunteering for stuff. But if I can do something I enjoy and it helps somebody out, I mean, like, where's a harm, really? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And how long have you been playing with the festival? Um, I think this will be my third year in a row. <laughs> okay. I ended up on a whim just um, playing. Yep. One and two nicks one year because my now friend Johnny Thunder was just like looking for acts and I was just like that well, might as well try and get on this belt because mm -hmm. it seems like a fun thing to do and then I just really enjoyed playing it and last year was just like just want to play as many places as possible because it's it's a fun weekend you know you can't go anywhere without turning a corner and hearing a band or something that you might like so yeah, be one of those bands <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we talked about not getting the money and having fun. Besides that, what else have you gained from playing for the Worcester Music Festival? I think a lot of people know who I am now, which is really weird considering I'm from Leverick, which is yeah. like half an hour that way. So, I mean, like, it, it's quite, it's weird. You meet a lot of people who you never usually meet because, mm -hmm. you know, most bands are busy and you can't always get to gigs because, well, obviously, I, there's no way I can get home. <laughs> and I'm yeah. not not into couch surfing anymore so it's kind of like you know I wouldn't meet half the people I would have done unless it was for mm -hmm. you know playing festivals with people and plus you get to listen to loads of really good music okay. I mean like you know the charts these days and everything is just so wrong mm -hmm. and then you get to hear all these bands and you're like why am I listening to you on the radio that would have been so much better but at least you get to see a band and you know make a few friends contact mm -hmm. stuff like mm -hmm. that it's pretty good Definitely. So what do you think about the Worcester music scene these days then? It's alright. I mean, like when I when I came back like when I came up to Worcester about three years ago it was like really it was like a fight you can go a week without seeing a really good band and stuff and you know, it's it's still like that in certain places but you know, a lot of venues have stopped doing music and it's kind of like you know, I wanna go for a drink but I wanna hear some music and mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's I think it's going to start booming again because it's got that kind of tepid water thing going on where there's going to be a few waves. I think it's a lot of new bands out these days that are going to do a lot. To be fair, they're going to yeah yeah. So we're kind of kind of excited for the next year. And are those bands in the Worcester Music Festival? I think so. Actually, I've been looking through the festival guide, mm -hmm. and I've uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of people in there. I've got my eye on. So you know, okay. it's going to be pretty good. Great stuff. So who um, are the bands you're actually looking forward to seeing? Well, my friend Tabby, who is a really great singer. I mm. mean, like, when I first met her, I was just like, she's a friend of mine. And then she started singing, I was like, <laughs> you know, when you just can't speak anymore mm -hmm. because of it, it's it was absolutely brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to seeing her do some stuff this year. Um, Vault of Eagles, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've been going for a while, but they are. So I really like I really like watching them because they're really nice people yeah. and they're really good at what they do. And obviously man size because a bit of a fanboy for man size to be fair. <laughs> Got their t shirt and everything. Oh. Not wearing it today though because I felt a shirt would go really well with my gig but 
usually wear a good man size t shirt every now and again. Okay, great stuff. So, um, when you think about the music festival, what's your best memory so far? Obviously, you have quite a few. If you were to pick one, if I was to pick one out of like the whole three years I've been doing this, yeah. um, oh, I'm gonna have to probably say it was last year. And I was playing up at the horn and trumpet and mm -hmm. I had no idea what I was going to do because I had my mum in the audience, I had my dad and I was just like, because I'm, I'm quite well renowned, round, uh, renowned for swearing quite a lot Yeah. and uh, music of a very kind of acquired taste I'd like to say. So it was kind of like trying to edit myself out but still performing and it was just it was just a lot of fun at the end of the day you know you just kind of do those things and you apologize for certain things you say <laughs> and then uh, have to do lyrics that aren't exactly the same as you usually would and then i went ahead and did the pig and drum about an hour later and just that was it no parents no <laughs> nothing just went absolutely you had it. freedom i had free like you know when you've been restricted that much you know the next venue you go to is just going to get help so yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Yeah. I was kind of glad of that, to be fair. That sounds great. And you'll be playing on Friday. Yeah, I'm actually... Be kind. Yeah, I'm playing too. Like, I'm marked in there as playing <laughs> at the horn and trumpet at 8.40 mm -hmm. and then playing at 8.45 at the Crown. But we've managed to sort that. That was basically a timing issue. And so I'm actually playing at 8.40 at the horn and trumpet and then with my band, the Filthy Kind, at, eight, at 10, half past 10 this time. So yeah. yeah, it's pretty. It's going to be pretty hectic. I don't think my voice is going to last. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I've got two gigs after that, so it's kind of like got to kind of reserve my voice a little mm -hmm. bit. But yeah. I'll still give it a bit. You've got to put all your all into it, otherwise. It's a point playing, yeah. Absolutely. And the filthy kind is a pretty new band, isn't it? Yeah, we've only like we started last October, but we never we didn't have a drummer for ages, mm -hmm. and so we've been we were like just going freaking out because we just couldn't find a decent drummer and then we found this guy Quaid who I contacted to first be our drummer but then I don't know I think got lost in translation a bit mm -hmm. you know so I kind of you know we were writing we didn't really think about it so and now since about May I think it was like since he started it's just basically taken the whole band and just exploded it everywhere we can we're writing stuff now that when we started out we just didn't think were possible and now we just it's getting pretty good. Okay. Yeah. And what do you think is special about the filthy kind? I think, actually, to be fair, I think it's the fact that we can, we just gel so much. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we've all got like really different influences. I mean, my guitarist Dave, he's more into his that or blues kind of stuff yeah. in the 70s rock. A bit of Queens of the Stone Age thrown in. Mikey's more of a metal head, you know, goes to download, you know, has really long hair, has a beard, <laughs> yeah. kind of looks like your stereotypical metal head, and, but it still likes kind of like tall stuff, and the good thing about it is I don't have to shout or scream or anything, it's just like, you know, you put really nice melodies over these riffs and over these songs, and it just works, that's, I think that's the best part about it, is it just, it just works. Okay, and if you... If you were to tell something, to say something to the audience, you know, about your band and why they should come see you guys at the festival, what would that be? I think you should come because we're going to kick some serious ass. I mean, like, serious ass. I mean, we've got stuff in the pipeline that's just going to blow your mind. That's pretty much why you should come down and see us. Because yeah. it's just not what you expect. Especially if you send me on my own. It's brilliant. <laughs> Okay, I think that's a good enough reason. So, uh, thanks a lot, Michael. No problem. Pleasure to speak to you. Yeah, pleasure. And uh, yeah, everyone, go see the filthy kind on Friday. Definitely make sure you're there to get your mind blown. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.